All right, welcome to the community call for KCP July 26, 2022. And the first topic was settled already, so it's the 26th or the 25th. And then I think we don't have so many topics. Okay, some pop up, that's good. Um, yeah, maybe let's start. Screen share. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's start with the first one after I share. First one is from Paul about one PR adding owner files, I think. Yes, the PR is introducing uh, a first pass at owner files. On the second comment on that PR is everyone that is tagged in one of those files. So I'm just looking to get a thumbs up that you've seen what we're going to implement and that you're okay with where your name is listed. Once we have that, then uh, we'll try and merge it this week. And I think everybody who's interested to review certain areas, don't be shy. Just, I mean, comment here or just open PR. I think review is always welcome. There's no gating at all. All right. Then we have the usual issue, hygiene, we do at the end. The DBS is landed. Everybody noticed, or hopefully didn't notice. So I think it was pretty slick, and uh, nothing big happened. Um, great work from Steve. So big shout out. Um, there are not so many things changing. So please change to go one eighteen. We have generics. Um, we still use cluster names. This will change, I think, within I don't know this week or next week or something. I hope we change that. Something else now it's pretty pretty ugly. It's some that 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 something cluster name field. So you will notice. And if you if your code breaks, please update your code to use our logical cluster library. Don't touch this field manually. If you do, that's a big sign. Update this library. That I think all for rebase. Steve, Steve here. Any more comments? Something to look out for? I think he's not here. Yeah, I don't see him. Okay. Next topic, Phil, 1528. Oh, yeah, Sean uh, uh, highlights. There's a V2 of logical cluster. So KCP dev logical cluster slash V2. So switch to that one. If you get a compile error now on, on rebase or something, might be because of that we changed the version. All right, Phil, scope uh, hey. finalizers. Yeah, so uh, I've been doing, as you probably heard from me on your Slack channel quite a bit recently, <laughs> I've been doing some uh, looking into the um, workload migration by uh, advanced scheduling. And um, it, it's, uh, it's able to work with the advanced scheduling feature that's there. And my uh, like demo workload can migrate with no downtime between two clusters, which is great. Um, however, as we start to think about it more in a real world scenario where a customer's workload could in reality have one of really infinite CRs that they are using to do whatever they might be doing with whatever operator they might be doing it with, uh, it became kind of apparent that although we can make sure that their pod moves in a graceful way, we can't ensure that their service would stay up unless we can somehow get a sort of exhaustive list of all resources that we need to watch and migrate. Um, so we've discussed it a little and what the concept that kind of came to us is that the placement uh, object seems to be defining the namespace as the like unit of currency for where work is placed in the sync targets from KCP. And as that's the case, if we could have the soft finalizers implemented i'm calling them soft finalizers sorry that's just the vernacular that we've sort of generated for them i don't know what the right word to use for that is but um the like annotation based finalizers anyway uh, if they could be moved to the namespace level where um every resource in a namespace wouldn't be removed from the like losing sync target until the finalizer for that sync target is removed from the namespace then we can 
have a like namespace level gracefulness of moving migrating workloads between sync targets. So I'm looking around who has an opinion for that. Joachim, David, maybe. Well, we already talk about this sometime, but it didn't feel uh, very Kubernetes-like. No, I mean, soft finalizers behave like a more or less finalizer. So you said that per object. Um, I think it kind of makes sense because for them, um, for external coordination controllers, it will be a little bit madness having to look for each one of the resources inside the namespace. So perhaps perhaps we should take a look at that and, and try to implement something similar. Yeah, I tend to see that as well as, a, uh, as something possible as a first step or at least a minimal uh unblocker for for uh the users for the, the team for um but it seems to me that the main the, the the main underlying uh question or requirement is um possibly dependencies between objects how do we manage the fact that uh, you know um some resource rely on some other resources and that we have to you know, uh, create or delay in order uh, with ordering. So maybe there is a, a, a wider question, uh, I think, under this. But obviously, I'm not against you know managing that as long as as the uh, namespace is as all the related objects are. We know that they're in a single namespace, having the ability to define this uh, soft uh, finalizer on the namespace might 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 help, I think. And at least on the virtual workspace side, it would be quite easy to just read on the namespace that of, of the object instead of directly reading on the on the resource itself, uh, this annotation. That would not be uh, no, much of a problem. Andy, you have your hand up. I changed my mind. <laughs> Never oh, well. mind. So, um, Owner references don't help here, do they? Uh, yeah, I, I, I did, sorry, I did mention that in the um, alternatives that we considered is um, some sort of like education of the user to rig up their owner references so that we can still just look at the deployment and the service and the ingress and Kubernetes will know not to clear out all the other stuff until those things have been deleted. But if the if the user rigs that up wrong, then they're still going to suffer from downtime. Then I see. But then, David, your your proposal is some different kind of ownership, right? But this is also has the same problem. Yes, I mean, I yeah. The, the long term, it seems to me that the long term solution is that um, when you know. Bringing things to the to the sync target layer. I mean, through the syncing, we completely remove all uh, ownership uh, or you know owner uh, concept and and values. And so all the objects that we sync, uh, they are completely standalone. And and obviously we might want in the future to have some some sort of information that that keeps the links between the things that have been synced. On the same target, and 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 remember that they were linked uh, exactly the same way as they were linked, or a way a similar way as they were linked on the KCP layer. Probably we need something like that, or we need a way in the transformations to, you know, derive the relationship between synced objects from the relationships between the the, the upstream objects. Any now is your time. Yes, now I have something. Um, so, Phil, if it'd be possible, could you write up a very specific concrete example? Um, I know you mentioned like a secret or a custom resource, but if you could put together 
uh, some pictures or YAML or something for a deployment and whatever it references and what breaks specifically when there's movement, I think that would help me at least um, because I guess I'm, some of this I'm thinking which should just work without issue. So uh, a concrete example would be helpful if you could put something together. Yeah, I can do that, yeah. Thanks. I, I suppose it, I, what I couldn't do is put together an exhaustive uh, set of examples, but I think no. just do one. I mean, I, I would love one where we can say like, yes, we can go solve this problem. And if that is a big enough problem that covers some large percentage of use cases, then you know maybe we've we've done some help. We might not have completely solved the problem, but you know anything's better than nothing. And trying to be exhaustive isn't necessarily something we're going to be able to do, you know, in one step. My, so yeah. this would also help me. I think my question mark is how do you even know on the new cluster that everything is up? Whatever, whatever up means. I mean, do you wait that the deployment is? healthy and has yeah that's class. kind of a, an open question that we're discussing at the moment so <laughs> our, our fairly um blunt sort of approach to it at the moment is uh has the dns propagated is kind of where we're going with it the more long term is um we well I mean, we might get sort of lost in the weeds of this, but uh, we are looking at a more sort of comp complex way of testing the application to see if it's healthy or not before removing it from the losing cluster. But that's still sort of up in the air for us right now. Yeah. Also, just one note. Everything we're talking about is a multi-location case, right? So it's acceptable that the user has to specify things just as a general rule of thumb. It doesn't have to be magic. So if we cannot guess the right thing because it's just not obvious, then specifying something, whatever this means, can be some, I mean, the owner reference thing or some, some similar concept that we talked about. But this would be accept, acceptable. Uh, yeah, I suppose the primary use case that I'm aiming for at the moment is uh, the like an example of a customer's deployed something to AWS and they want to move it to their GCP clusters or something, mm -hmm. and this should all happen with no downtime. Is... Mm -hmm. So what we what we briefly talked about in storage land was that maybe we need a migration object where you can specify things, and then maybe you can specify what it means to be up and similar mm -hmm. properties. Yeah, at the moment we do, uh, we are writing up the opportunity for users to tell us how to do a DNS health check uh, so that we can take out targets yeah. that are unhealthy. So the idea we had was to reuse those health checks to query a cluster to see if it was ready to point DNS at it yet. Um, yeah, but certainly some sort of health check I think has to be involved here, yeah. So maybe yeah. So, Go ahead. Sorry, just in terms of next steps, then if I'm if I'm taking an action away from this, it's to come come up with a an actual demo of where this falls short, and yeah, or, or not necessarily falling short, but becomes very complicated to monitor everything. Concrete example. It doesn't have to be a live demo or anything. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll put something together. Yeah. And I would suggest to maybe start a discussion and involve the storage people. I think they have similar issues. Like yeah, I would be interested in, so you said about something on health checks and DNS checks. Where would you specify them? And imagine there are other things like storage, for example. Yeah, OK. Um, who did you want me to talk to about that? Um, people around storage, so Guy, what's his name? He's not here, I think. He's here. Oh, he's Hi. here. Oh, cool. Yes. So m migration, right? That was what we briefly talked about some weeks ago. Yep. Right. So, so if you can if you can start a discussion in Slack or so, or even here if you have ideas around that. So you mean uh, you mean you meant me uh, to the, yes. the ideas about? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, 
so we, we can describe uh, the, the migration flows, but for now, the epic that we created just for the sake of uh, discussion, it does not include it. Uh, OK, OK. The, I mean, the, the, idea was to, the idea was just to keep designing it uh, yes. in the background so that you know we have some, some uh, um, feature going forward versus uh, a design that we, you know, we, we create uh, while we work on that. Yeah. So what, what we could do, we could do a design session, just a sketching session, and talk about migrations. Would this help? Yes, for, sure. Definitely. Uh, I'm open to that, yeah. So we can talk offline and just yes. eat and sketch something out. All right. Cool. Sounds good. good. Okay. All right, so I think that's all. Um, looking uh, to Paul again, is there anything we have to do for planning? I would love if any of the folks that have uh, 0.8 design items in the work packages uh, who have discussed them already could talk to the group about them if they're prepared. So it looks like we've got links for API evolution in there, as well as KCP network downstream namespace translation. So Joachim or Andy or Stefan, and then David, if you have anything you want to talk about inverse syncing. Yeah, I think there's still some design sessions needed. So namespace, where did you see that? What's the list you have in, uh, in front of you? It's one you got that there at the top. Network MVP, there's a document called KZP Network Downstream Namespace Translation. Oh, OK, all right. Yeah, so this one is definitely out outstanding, David. And Joachim, maybe we should talk about that. Yeah, the inverse thinking, you mean? Yes, yeah. uh, I, I didn't uh, start thinking about it. Mainly, um, sorry. Mainly, yeah. this would probably, I mean, be possible for me next week. Uh, following the, you know, uh, brainstorming and thinking about the sync transformations and also the current state of the sync, because you know a number of changes uh, here have to occur, and I think this would mainly fit just after that. Uh, once we have you know, cleaned up if, the, the sinker. If you can invite next week, early next week or so. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm trying to do that. Yeah, this topic here, yeah, there has been some discussion still ongoing. So, yeah, read to that. I'm not sure we can summarize it at the moment, but there are discussions what, um, what the problem actually is around, I mean, namespaces is one thing, like how to implement DNS. The other thing where I have seen discussions is around pod identity and whether we need IPs, which are in a common SDN of some kind. So there are discussions going on. But I think it's not ready here for, for reporting. And API evolution, we had a meeting I think any we need another one maybe to get more concrete. We talk through conversionless evolution, but I think we settled more on let's do CL based conversion. Yeah, I think our so next step was to sketch out a Google Doc with proposed changes to the various APIs, resource schema, et cetera, types to add in um, CEL conversions and just sketch out what that would look like before doing any real coding. Yeah, we have to check. So uh, Steve is out, I think, next week or so. Yeah, he's, um, I don't know if he's available today, but I know he's um, out starting tonight for yeah. some time. All right. And the last one, um, the first here in the list is Mike here, I don't think. No, I don't see him. So Project in fairness, would be good to discuss that. Anyway, so he's not here. Um, Paul, that's 
all we have to talk about at the moment. Okay, so my, my question, I guess, for you in the group is that on any of these documents, is it in a point where we should walk through use cases? Do we need any help, other feedback? Like, what can we share that would be useful for anyone who's interested in the topics in hopes of getting ahead of zero data implementations? I guess a good question to start with is, does anyone on the, is everyone on the call familiar with what we mean by API evolution? Or would it be worth going over that in general? Give us 30 seconds. Sure. So uh, you can create APIs and export them in KCP. And they're very similar to CRDs but we don't support conversion webhooks like you have with CRDs. So if you create a new API for widgets and it's V1 alpha one, and you wanna to go to V1 alpha two or V1 or whatever, we don't currently have any mechanism that really makes that super possible. So we want to find ways to do that and ideally do it without conversion webhooks if possible. Why without? Sorry for uh, jumping in. Mainly because it can reduce the burden on implementation so that you don't have to have webhooks up and running. Also, we if we can do everything server side, it's a little bit easier. Um, may, and I mean, mainly right now, we don't we do support webhooks, but we don't support service-based webhooks, or at least not the ones that you like typically see where you've got a service and cert manager generates certs and like everything you get with controller runtime, for example. So anybody who is developing CRDs and has conversion webhooks will have to jump through some hoops to get things working on a KCP instance. And so if we can avoid that, uh, it's a little bit better. And we are building a distributed system here. So it's not like Cube, which has a uniform network environment. So this is distributed. So there might be there might be shards in US, East, West, in Europe, and conversion web hooks they are crucial. Like they have to work. If they don't work, things break, like garbage collection or something like that. Just breaks in Cube. And in this distributed world, um, having webhooks and forcing everybody to deploy them in an available way, planet scale is just hard and we don't want that. And CL is in the server, it's code which you can use to build pretty complex conversions with. So that's the plan. Thanks. All right, so As I would go be, back. It might right. be useful to mention that I believe the idea on, on API evolution is that we will also dog treat it in KCP to move something like the workspace API from alpha to beta to GA, we, or maybe, maybe not alpha. We definitely don't want to hard code conversions like Cube has done in the past. So we want to use that. And, and also, the majority of the APIs that KCP has added are done using API exports and API bindings right now and API resource schemas. So there's a couple that are pure CRDs that have to be. But any place where we are able to use the schema plus export plus binding combination, we do. So it is. It, would definitely be dog fooding. And maybe um, another hint, we enabled, I think it merged, so Sean just left. I think it merged already, so we have enabled CELs for admission. So if you want uh, admission in the sense of validation, actually. So you can add CEL terms to your open API schemas. 
and play with that, which usually, or for many cases, um, allows us to get rid of admission web hooks. So you can do complex expressions against CIDs. It's alpha and upstream. I think they promote to beta in 125 or something, but we enabled it already. Okay. More comments about those topics, questions? And I would go back. So I think the only thing which is left is the hygiene for the issues. Is there any other topic? So now is the time. We still have plenty of minutes. Otherwise, let's do that. That's not a lot. So let's see. That's just epic for the next release, right? This is presumably for eight, eight not seven, yeah. right? I don't know if I created one for eight yet. I can. Let me go do that real quick. It's one tick, one second. I just do it. Oh, okay, you got it. There we have it. So it's about prototyping the first movement of PVs in this case, uh, NFS, because probably it uh, can be opened from different clusters. That's easier. Guy, you want to go through that quickly? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, thank you. So I, this, um, this, the scope is um, around. So we we had wanted really wanted to scope it down to RWX volumes, and the reason uh, and NFS is a. a um, as a generic one is is being used here, but uh, it can fit any other um, RG, um, RWX volume provider. And the the idea behind the scope uh, initial scope is that RWX is really uh, it doesn't require exclusivity between clusters, um, and it makes this flow really uh, focus on the APIs that we need to um, to expose on one hand and on the the flows of sharing information between the workload clusters and the NKCP and the control plane. So this is this uh, uh, overview. And the 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 objectives here are about around you know, setting up storage in the uh, the first one is like setting up the storage in the workloads uh, clusters um, with NFS as, as the example storage for all of these. And we're, we're assuming here that there, uh, it's a single location so that there is a uh, movement between clusters in the, in that location. Um, and that, uh, it's the same network storage, uh, that all these clusters are connected to. So it's not, uh, hyper converged or any, um, anything that, creates uh, a disaster point where it's not like the data is not available or anything like that so storage is external and um, you know in the one location kind of case uh, then the deployment of application uh, will will invoke dynamic provisioning so the application starts without having storage provision and then through KCP gets storage provisioned uh, then we want to show the placement changes for that application, so how that application can move between those clusters. So if a cluster goes down or if we on demand want to change it, I'm not sure if on demand is really a use case, but I, I guess it is, but um, the cluster failure is really simple to uh, to, fit, to understand as, as the use case here. So it's uh, that's that could be the demo. And at the end, uh, we want to also support deprovisioning the storage as well so how do we get rid of storage from um when when kcp decides to and not when one of the clusters is uh um you know not when we actually just take the workload or the application away out of one of the clusters so these are the objectives um 
Uh, the demo steps is pretty much going through this, what, what, is, what I just said, but with a little bit more detail. So I, I don't think I should really repeat. Uh, there's one detail here about in point six that um, when we move things around, we, we actually do it a little bit different. So we, we actually need to uh, be able to change the mode so it doesn't go back to to dynamic provisioning again. So we want all the information that tells us that this PVC is already bound and we already have the information of the PV so that we now can sync those together as, as a bound couple. Uh, and it becomes, in, in the storage terms, it's a static provisioning mode where these things um, get get bound together by the controller that puts them in the cluster. Um, do you do you depend on transformations and inverse syncing? Um, so transformation, I I I'm pretty sure we will require some. I'm I'm not yeah. sure if it's going to be complex. It's it might be uh, scope to this one. Uh, like the PVC will just have internal internal uh, transformations or. But I guess as we go along, uh, the rest of the uh, you know the things that are out of scope here, we might have more. Uh, to to handle um, inverse syncing, you mean the status syncing, or no? That you you get back the PV? Yes, yes. So that we yeah. this is a thing that we have to we have to support here. So if you go uh, a little bit further, I I didn't really know what to put in action items, I, so I I kind of kept it uh, by the template. But the stories I tried to go uh, and describe that we need the PV information KCP, yeah. and yeah. we so... need we need that. Yeah, we have to talk, I think, offline, David, you and yeah. you also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably uh, uh, include you, Guy, in, in the session of next week about uh, yeah. inverted syncing. Yeah. Yep. The, the, the main challenge is how to know in which mode a given object on the KCP side is so that we don't <laughs> loop. Yeah. yeah, I see. So we, so we, I would, we had one discussion yeah. about it. I remember um, um, we, we didn't conclude uh, any specific direction, but yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that next week. So sure. I would, I would move to the next one for, for the moment. Um, thank you. It was really good to see that there's progress and we get storage finally, at least the first steps. Very cool. Um, next one. Clarify. Oh yeah, this one. Steve's not here, right? So yeah, I looked a bit into it. Uh, obviously, uh, we didn't go into those details. Uh, so he did the math, which we didn't, right? Or just uh, very yeah. briefly. So bucket, did... bucket number and exactly. bucket depths, right? Yeah. And so default is two two. Yes. But if we have different ones, so this one is default, but yes, we have different ones. Yeah, David. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what, what you're saying. I mean, we just uh, uh, limited us uh, calculating the maximum number and minimum number for both the size and the length, but not of the interaction between all. And obviously, according to, to the cases, uh, you end up with a number of users in a bucket which is uh, too high. Uh, for you know the the scaling limits of of KCP, oh, so cool. like here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I mean, I I just didn't calculate for each case, so so I assigned to TBD, um, yeah, it's not sure a, yeah. Paul or Steve want to work on that. Somebody should. It's mainly a question of of deciding if we manage this mainly by documentation, by just validation of the right combinations uh, in, uh, in in the common line, for example. I mean, we have to decide how to manage yeah. that so that yeah. to, to avoid users to, uh, you know, setting inconsistent uh, values. Yeah. So let's, let's talk uh, in Slack or so offline. Sure. Certainly not. Uh, not blocking anything, but yes, uh, he's right. So many yeah. of those values don't make make sense. Okay, so TBD, next one. Mike, 
if anybody reads that before. I, I think we need to have the plugin for changing workspaces be a bit more cognizant about buckets, home buckets. Mm -hmm. um, it, it basically makes it hard to go up and down between um, like when you're in a home workspace and you go up and then try to get back into it, it's a bit problematic. I also think something might be broken. Um, mm. Like you can get cluster workspaces and see them, but if you try to get workspaces, you don't always, even in the same yeah, spot. So there is this personal workspace code maybe in play and permissions. Yeah. So I think uh, let's get rid of the personal workspace stuff, which I know yeah. is on your plate, David. And right, started. And we just yeah. need to evaluate the UX on this. And if there's any changes we need to make, we make them. Okay. So yeah, no, and still, in any case, obviously, it seems to me that there is the you know more marginal question of um, do we want? I mean, when you do a, a uh, kubectl ws you know till day you end up uh in you want your home workspace and you end up in a, in in the workspace with the full path but then if you want to go one level up you don't have the right because any no no user has the right to see anything in the buckets so yeah, we, could, but, we could see our own right like the bucket where our home is in you could do that but we also yes. can just skip. Like, if you're in a home workspace and you want to go up one level, it just takes you to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think something like that maybe would be would make more sense. Yeah, please comment here. Propose something. Yeah. Okay. And maybe this is even help wanted issue. Somebody could do like in the CLI. It's not too complex. Yeah, it's quite simple. I assume. All right, so milestone, I guess this personal workspace removal, this will be solved. So maybe it's a zero seven issue, but I'm not sure. So TBD, I would select. Yeah. And I commented that maybe with personal workspaces, it will, will be solved or easier or more consistent, whatever. Somebody's lying, no resource found. Yeah, this is, this is what I was saying about workspaces versus cluster workspaces and also it's like a permission thing and it's related to the previous issue so i think just revisit this when we get rid of personal workspaces and when we fix 1583 15 83 yeah which we just looked at Um, another one. Yes, I think was this fixed? I don't remember. But this is correct, right? He's saying he doesn't want the usage line to show list up above. Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bug. That's true. Help wanted. Good first issue. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess we will remove this even with a personal workspace removal. So there's no command anymore, which would trigger us to touch this as well, I guess. So yes, yes, obviously, because the the least uh, command is only useful to point to do the personal scope. Yeah, yeah. Okay, similar one also. Good first issue. I wanted and TVD. Somebody has to rework the documentation here. 
I think this was touched some days ago, a week or so. Somebody can check. As, maybe it's even solved already. Rings a bell. Oh, yeah. Um, that came out of a discussion in Slack. So we talked about API evolution earlier today. And um, basically, we postponed a number of changes. So like, we have path and workspace mixed. So sometimes a reference to a workspace uses path, sometimes um, workspace. And this is, of course, not uh, uniform. We want to change it. But we postpone it until we move to v1 alpha 2 or v1 beta 1. And we want to use uh, API evolution, so CL conversion probably to do that. So we don't break users. That was our decision. So every time you find something like that, it, maybe it doesn't uh, count for everything, like everything in CRDs, but or in the API resource schemas. But those things which are cosmetics, please add to 1567. And we come to them when we uh, bump the API version. All right. And this is an ongoing thing. So TBD, I guess. We don't have dates for API promotions yet. All right, I think. This is empty. And with that, we have concluded our agenda. So we still have 50 minutes. Is there any other topic? No other chance. OK, if there's none, everybody gets back 50 minutes. Thank you, and see you again next week. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye.